The volume variable oscillator in the Termin is the component that allows the musician to add dynamics to the music that is being played. It is therefore an important component of the Termin. Today we will examine its schematic and we will build and test it first on a breadboard, as usual, and then on a Termin board itself. Let's do this! Hi there! I am Carlo Carrano and this is Electronics Engineering Made Easy! The volume variable oscillator is centered around the transistor Q1, ABC547. The transistor is polarized in the linear region of the characteristics through the resistors R5 on the emitter, R4 on the base, R2 also on the base, and R1 on the collector. In parallel to resistors R4 and R5, there are capacitors C6 and C7 needed to keep stable the DC component of the voltage on the emitter and on the base of the transistor. The oscillator frequency is given by the resonating tank made of inductor L1 and capacitors C1 and C2, which is a variable capacitor. C2 can be slightly adjusted to tune the oscillator to the frequency value of the volume resonance circuit that we will see in another video. The output of this oscillator is taken from the collector of the transistor through the capacitor C5 and the antenna is attached to the collector of the transistor. The antenna will add an extra capacity to the collector of the transistor Q1, uh, which basically is in parallel to the capacitances of C1 and C2. So moving a hand in proximity of the antenna will actually allow us to change the frequency of the oscillator and therefore to control the volume. The capacitor C3 is used to keep the voltage at the upper side of the inductor L1 or the lower side of the resistor R1 uh, as constant as possible from the DC perspective. Uh, this is equivalent from the radio frequency perspective of keeping this point connected to ground. One last component is the potentiometer RV1, which has point 0.1 connected to the positive of the power supply, point 0.3 connected to ground, and a cursor connected to the resistor R3, which goes to the base of the transistor Q1. Moving the cursor of the potentiometers allows us to change slightly the polarization voltage at the base of the transistor and therefore this causes the capacitance of the collector base junction to change slightly. And since this capacity is basically in parallel to C1 and C2, moving the potentiometer will actually end up changing a little bit the frequency of the oscillator, so we can adapt it to the person that is playing the termin. So, here is the oscillator mounted on a breadboard. Let's see how the components are located. So, you can see first of all here the transistor Q1 and the order of collector, base and emitter. So, emitter on the right, collector on the left. I put the transistor across the lines 25, 26 and 27 on the, on the perf board and I connected also these three wires on this other side so I would have more points for to connect the components. So let's see here. First of all on the emitter we have uh, the resistor R5 that goes to ground. So emitter is this side and this is the resistor that goes from the emitter here down to ground over here. Then, in parallel to the resistor, there is the capacitor C7 of 10 microfarad, which you can see right over here. And then, on the base, on this side, we have the resistor R4 that goes to ground. And that is this one here. So you see from the base, it goes over here and then to ground. And then, in parallel to this resistor, there is a capacitor C6, which is right over here. Then, 
Still on the base, we have the resistor R3 that goes to the potentiometer, RB1, on the center. And uh, you can see the base on this side here. There is this resistor that goes down here to the center of the potentiometer. And then one side of the potentiometer is connected to the positive for the power supply. And the other side is connected to ground, like here. Across the potentiometer there is also a capacitor C8, which is right over here. I put it down, down here. Now, continuing on this side, between collector and emitter there is a capacitor C4, 170 picofarad. And it is right here, right in between the collector and the emitter. And then we have on the collector a lot of components, so let's start with the the resistor R2 actually this resistor R2 is still on the base and goes up to here connected to R1 and then goes to the 12 volts so let's see where that is um, on the base here is this resistor that then goes up to here where there is this other resistor that goes to the positive. So this is R1, which is connected onto this column, and this is R2. Now to R1, there is also connected this inductor L1, which is this one. You can see it goes between R1 and on this other side, on the collector of the transistor Q1. And then in parallel to L1 there is a C1, which is this. And there is a, the C2, which is a variable capacitor, which is this one down here. And uh, finally, we have another capacitor, C5, that goes to the output. That would be this one, you see it's connected on this side. To the collector and to all the other components and then there is this capacitor goes to this test point which is the one where we will take the output to check it with the oscilloscope another test point is over here on the ground and uh, let's see what else did i miss anything okay looks everything in here the antenna will be later connected to the collector again and that antenna will provide a further capacity on this point, basically it will act like it was in parallel to all the other components that we have up here, L1, C1 and C2. And so this antenna will be able to change the resonance frequency of uh, this uh, resonant tank and uh, it will change the frequency of the oscillator in total when getting the hand closer or farther away from the antenna itself. Remember this is the volume oscillator so this antenna is the one that will take care of regulating the volume of the theremin itself. So that's it for the description of the circuit on the breadboard. So let's now connect it to the power supply and to the oscilloscope and let's see how it works. So now we will connect the breadboard to the power supply which is right over here and set to 12 volts exactly and we will attach the output to the oscilloscope to see what comes out from this oscillator, if it works or not. So let's start by connecting the power supply. And I will do it this way. And then I will connect the oscilloscope. So this side goes to ground, and this side goes to the output. And then you can see right over here that the oscillator is working properly. And if you take a look at the frequency in particular, it's right now set to 413.2 kHz, which is about right to what we want for the volume oscillator. Once we will be the volume resonant circuit, we will may we may have to adjust a little bit the frequency of the oscillator by adjusting a little bit this variable capacitor. 
but for now we just leave it like that we see that the circuit is working correctly uh, one more thing that I wanted to show you is the what this potentiometer is all about it's, if we look over here at the oscilloscope when I move the potentiometer you can see that the frequency changes a little bit while I move the potentiometer and this is because I'm changing the internal capacity of the junction of the transistor and so that affects the overall frequency of the oscillator the reason for this potentiometer is basically to adjust slightly the frequency so that uh, uh, the person that plays the instrument will be able to adjust the frequency based on uh, his body because the body of each person has a different capacity and so will act differently on the antenna or the volume in this case the person would be able to adjust slightly the frequency of the uh, volume oscillator to adjust it to the capacity of its body and bring it to the right value so the term in volume will work correctly so this is it for uh, for this test now let's uh, build the circuit on the board of the termin where it belongs and uh, and then we will test it again to make sure it still works correctly uh, in other words if i mounted it correctly <laughs> so let's do that to save some time Rather than showing an accelerated video of me assembling the oscillator, I decided to just show you some pictures taken while I was doing that. You can see here the various intermediate stages while I was adding the components to complete the circuit. These are the pictures where only the transistor and its emitter side components were installed. These are those with part of the collector side components and then the base side components and finally the whole circuit now that we have built the volume variable oscillator on the perf board of the termin we just need to go ahead and test it to make sure that it's actually oscillating uh, the frequency is around 400 kilohertz this one is the output of the oscillator so let's measure and let's see what happens let me turn it on and as you can see on the oscilloscope we have exactly the same wave that we were seeing when the circuit was mounted on the breadboard let's move the volume control the potentiometer of the volume control and let's see if there is any change that happens on the system Okay, you can see that the pony with the potentiometer on, on one side we have about 413 kilohertz 413, 417.5 actually and now I'm going to rotate the potentiometer all the way to the other side here and now the frequency is 418.6 so there is an excursion of about one kilohertz which is about right that's what we need to tune up the volume control antenna of the theremin based on the capacity of the person displaying the theremin itself this is it for the volume variable oscillator in future videos we will go through the remaining stages of the theremin the volume resonance circuit the VCA or voltage control amplifier and the audio preamp and amp for the preview. Finally, we will connect the antennas and fine tune the various elements to make it work together. See you soon and uh, happy experiments! Mm -hmm.